Deputy Jerry Adams. Mahu, Concordia, August Gordon Margaret. I'm a bit, uh, you know, conflicted by this debate. I, I went off and scanned the report and read the executive summary and wrote up notes and was briefed and took advice on it. And I came forward here with a, a speech, and then I heard the Taoiseach's remarks. And, you know, it's, it's a bit strange for the likes of me coming in here and trying to make sense of all of this. Uh, I believe in politics. Deputy, sorry, could I just ask you, do you intend to share your time? Yeah, I do. I do. I was going to come to that in a second. Go to Margaret. Thank you. Because uh, I, I, I do want to share my time with uh, Chuck Dadella, Martin Ferris, and Jonathan. Uh, but I, I, I just want to make some points in response to what the Taoiseach said, away from my written script. I believe in politics. I believe in politics as a public service. I believe in republicanism. I served in an assembly outside Belfast. There was none of the imagery of this institution on show. I look at the bust of James Connolly behind me. I look at Pierce. I think of the 1916 proclamation. I think of Markovich, the first woman elected as the Minister for Labour, who died in a poor hospital. And then I listen to what has been said here. The Fine Gael Manifesto refers to golden circles, crony government, crony capitalism. The Taoiseach talked about a full and substantive debate. This is not a full and substantive debate. This is a series of statements. I, I, I have no interest in, in Michael Laurie. I accept the report. I don't know the man. I've never spoken to him. I think that we should deal with them because the report was commissioned, the investigation was commissioned by the Dáil. Incidentally, not because you know, someone wanted to sort all of this out. And I'm a newcomer here. The Taoiseach's been here for, I think, 36 years, so he knows everything that needs to be known about this institution. The, the tribunal was set up because a well-known businessman went on the tour in Florida. That's, that's, and that has happened nearly in every single instance here, that something has got into the public arena, and then the politicians have played catch-up to try and deal with it. The Fine Gael Manifesto in its section on reform says, in any republic the people are supposed to be supreme. Judged by that standard, Ireland today is a republic in name only. Your words not my words. And when I said this in the course of the election, all sorts of commentators jumped all over me. So here we are to today. Last week, when this report was published, and I'm not naive, I, I learned my politics on the streets and in terms of campaigns. When I say I believe in republicanism, republicanism places citizens at the centre the citizen is in charge, and fublocked, and pubble. It's, it's, it's about rights, it's about equality, it's about treating everyone properly and decently. <coughs> so, I was very surprised, I have to say, that when this report was published, that it was business as usual here. All the things I had read about and seen and watched, and I sat in the visitor's gallery and so on, were happening under a new regime. And when Myself and other Cynthian deputies sought to have time to debate this report, and it was being debated the length and breadth of the country. And when I say the country, I mean the island. It's hard for me to get used when people talk about the nation. You know, it doesn't stop at the border. It's the entire nation, and as my friend Barry McElduff would say, and its offshore islands. But when this was being debated everywhere, the government refused to allow it to be debated here. And then the Taoiseach's uh, response to very reasonable questions uh, from me about the behaviour of Fine Gael, as, as outlined in the report, not my view, but as outlined in the report, was to jibe about the Northern Bank robbery. And I, I have to say, that's, if that's the way you want to go at this, fair enough, but I have to say that it was hardly a mature or statesperson-like response 
and I was disappointed in the Taoiseach because I always found you on a personal basis to be very fair and very, very uh, decent. So, if we're going to have a debate about these issues, if what we say rhetorically about bringing in a new era, about an, a rebuilding the Republic, well then, let's, let's deal with the issues in a very upfront, friendly, fraternal, but very, very straightforward way. I think the fact that we are not having a proper debate today flies in the face of government protestations that it's a government of reform. And it highlights the imperative of business in this chamber to be conducted in a different way. There's no motion. There's, there's, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk our way through all of this and we'll say what we say about it and shine. And the government may or may not at some point bring in some measures. And Sinn Féin is prepared to work with this government, prepared to work with this government, because we believe, not in this government, not even in Sinn Féin, we believe in a republic. We believe in a genuine republic on the island of Ireland. So the government have made some commitments in the direction of this. And you know, I note the absence of the Tanishta here today. Where, where's the Tanishta? Why, why isn't he here with the Taoiseach, dealing with these uh, matters? So, in my view, the first challenge facing this government, this report, and how you dealt with it, I think shows that you fell at the first hurdle. And I accept that you were, it was dropped on you, you didn't have notice of it, all of those things, as far as I know, and I don't. I don't make any judgment on any of that at all. And then there's the issue of tribunals. Sinn, Sinn Féin supports the notion of tribunals. We don't support the notion of 14 years and all the millions that were spent on it and so on and so forth. And th there are cases where you have to have an investigation into some issues, but we can't get investigations into other issues. You know, I've, I've met citizens, since, since I became a chocolate dollar, I have met citizens, women who were butchered in the hospital in Lourdes, who can't get an investigation in, into that. Other citizens up and down the country who are trying to get uh, the, the, the people here in this city who are living in slums out, at, out, out the back of and Dominic Street, out, out the back of our head office, at, at Croker Villas, and, and, in the middle of, and they can't get any sort of justice in terms of what they deserve as citizens. And therefore, if you want an answer to why there's a lack of confidence in the, the sort of political system. It seems there's one, this is a cliche, one law for the rich and one law for the poor. If you're part of the golden circle, you get a tribunal. Now, where's the tribunal for the, the social offender? Where, if, 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 if someone who is in poverty or, or who falls into some offence and, and, and this is not to accept any wrongdoing, but where, what do they get? They get hauled in and are put through due process. If you're a political activist, what, uh, you know, the Shell to Sea people, I think six of them are locked up for six months, trying to defend their communities after what I think was a corrupt decision by a government to give away natural resources. And these very law-abiding uh, family men from your county ended up in, uh, in, in prison. And where's the tribunal for just poor people? Just poor people. You're well known, I still walk the streets, people come to me. People who are trying to recover from drug addiction come to me. There were more people died from drug addiction in this capital city within the echo of the GPO than were killed at the height of the troubles in similar neighbourhoods in the six counties. And why did it happen? And why was it tolerated? And why did people have to fall back and defend themselves? So... Just to let you know, you have one minute. Okay. Go to market. All of the other bits and pieces, and I, I beg leave of Martin to give me slightly more, more time here. It's all here. You know, I quote it. Others have quoted it, but I'll, I'll do my best. Just in terms of the famous or infamous 50,000. The immediate donor was outside the jurisdiction. 
The donation was misrepresented in the books of the immediate donor. It was transmitted via a covert offshore route that on its face there appeared to be a disbursement of Telenor to Fine Gael, that following its rejection by Fine Gael, the payment reposed for some time in an offshore account in the Channel Islands, where it was retained under the control of the late David Austin, a Fine Gael fundraiser, that it was subsequently introduced to party funds disguised as a personal contribution by Mr Austin, and that the money was initially made at a time when the SA, uh, ESAT Digifone uh, Consortium of which Telenor was a key member, was engaged in direct negotiations with the Department of State for which a Fine Gael minister had direct cabinet responsibility, namely Mr Michael Larry. And the report goes on to say, quote again, of equal significance were donations made to Fianna Fáil in the context of the 1989 general election by Custom House, Docks Development Company and by Dr Michael Smurfett. And it goes on to detail all of that. So, Shine, that's the report. That's a whole series of reports gathering dust somewhere else. You talk about a small country, you talk about a, sm uh, uh, a, a proud nation, and so we are. And we're better than this. I'm not here to preach or moralise, but we are better than this. And the only way this is going to be sorted out is if the connection between big business, financiers, and all of those elites and the political class is broken, broken. And if we put in place uh, processes which are transparent and which serve citizens, and if we understand that society is made up of people, made up of communities, made up of families, and they are equal to every single one in this house. So I don't sit down inspired in any way that the government is going to do the right thing on all of those issues. I'm open to be convinced, but this party of Sinn Féin will do our very best within our lights to ensure, as, as we try to, to build every single day a real republic on this island, that the proclamation of 1916 is the mission statement of that republic, not a manifesto of any other political party which can be turned around in the back of an election and made to mean whatever happens to be the expedient thing at that time.